Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have for you my review of the brand new Galaxy S10 Plus. Is this the best Galaxy ever? Well, let's watch the video and see what we can decide. This is TK, let's check it out. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so that you are notified of whenever we put out more videos regarding the brand new Galaxy S10 or any of the other new flagships on the market. So this is the Galaxy S10 Plus. What we have here is essentially the best that Samsung has to offer in the S line of devices in 2019. And I say that because the S10 Plus has the biggest display, double cameras in the front, triple cameras in the back, and when we go down to the S10 and the S10e, we have different configurations between single camera in the front, triple in the back on the S10, and then a single one in the front, and a dual camera setup in the back on the S10e. But let's keep talking here about the S10 Plus. This is a 6.4 inch dynamic AMOLED Quad HD Plus 19 by 9 aspect ratio display. By far one of the best panels that you're going to be getting on any device in 2019. And not only because this is a Samsung panel, but it's also because this is the Galaxy S line of devices. It's a big display. What we're getting, of course, is also a display that does not have a notch and the bezels are almost very minimal here. And we have the punch hole camera set up. The dual cameras in the front offer us the ability of taking better pictures. We have a 10 and an 8 megapixel sensor here. The 8 megapixel sensor sitting on the right is mostly for depth perception, so it's not really two cameras. It's really one camera with the secondary one assisting the main camera. Now, on the back, we have triple cameras, two 12 megapixel sensors, one a standard focal length and one a telephoto. And of course, we have now the brand new ultra wide lens, which is something that we've wanted on Galaxy devices for a long, long time. LG has been doing it for years. Huawei had it before, of course, but now we finally have it on the Galaxy devices and I'm very happy. We have dual tone LED flash as well as the heart rate monitor on the right side there. And for the most part, those are things that we've seen in the past. The other unique things to this device on top of wireless charging is the ability of supporting reverse wireless charging. And that's something that's very unique now to this device as well as the mate line of devices. As this is something that they're using here to be able to augment the functionality of the device, not only to charge other devices like other smartphones that support Qi charging, but also to support the little Galaxy Buds that are now offered with the pre-order. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to check out my review of the brand new Galaxy Buds that offer a lot of great quality of sound, functionalities and features as well as the ability to be charged directly from your phone. The fingerprint sensor has been placed under the display. We have an ultrasonic 3D sensor that's different than the optic sensors that we've seen on other devices, comparably basically to OnePlus 6. And the reason behind that is that it'll actually work even if your finger is wet or if it's not exactly very clean. But when it comes down to the display, this is a 19 by 9 aspect ratio display. It's very nice, it's very long. The UI for the most part kind of compensates the two cameras on the front by moving some of those normal icons that you see at the top that usually reside in the top corner by moving that to the left. That may be to some people's liking, it may not, but for the most part, I think this is, in my opinion, a better implementation than a notch as it just doesn't sit there in the middle and it just sits off to the right. Uh, most applications on this device have already kind of worked around it. You may notice sometimes that you'll get that kind of like the bar kind of just comes back here. Uh, some other things like an example would be here. Let's go into Twitter. You notice right there again, it just gives it that nice little bar at the top. Depending on the applications, it will basically match it, but it does not really eat any much of your UI, and it just really looks very nice. Uh, but overall, one of the things that is very similar between all three devices of S10s is that they're all running the Snapdragon 855, and they all start at 128 gigs of internal storage, which is an amazing starting point, and we no longer have 64 gigs in any model to start with, because it just should not be there. On top of the fact that we have the expandable storage, some of the other really cool features here of course is that we do have IP68, we have an FM radio, we still have compatibility with Gear VR, that's something that did not die. A lot of people still actually remember that we had the Gear VR from Samsung, even though it hasn't been updated in the last year or so, we still have very good functionality and again I've done some videos for you guys there. We have Samsung DeX integrated as well and I've done another video there. So what I've tried to do here is give you guys a, a collection of all the videos that I've done in the description to see this all the other specific focused areas on this device. As far as the sound, what we have here is some of the best sounding speakers that you're going to get on the market. Quick audio demo, we're going to play Alex Crindo Jumbo by NCS Release here. Uh, this is obviously always my favorite song. I'm going to go ahead and put volume all the way up. Uh, just as a heads up, there's a built-in EQ that you're able to turn on. We do have Dolby Atmos that's built in as well. And we also have the ability of playing different volume levels on different applications. You notice here I can focus on the volume level here for the directly here within the YouTube application, as well as the ability of focusing on Google and the overall volume. And I can always jump in directly into the sound volume as well. Uh, let's go ahead and start with a quick demo.
No question about it, the speakers on this thing are not only loud, but they're very clear. Configure them to the level that you want directly with either the built-in EQ with the different presets. You can jump in between the different ones, or again, as I mentioned, go into the sound settings and get the configuration done correctly. They also include a really nice pair of headphones in the box that is braided headphones that supports a microphone as well. And not only that, this is really functional for whenever you wanna use the radio FM tuner that you have in here, as they use them as the actual antennas to be able to get you to have signal on this device. So I ran the N22 benchmark version 7.1.5, and this is the score that we got. And overall ranking, there's no question about it. This device is gonna be running on the latest and greatest. It's the Snapdragon 855, a seven nanometer chipset. It's similar to the way we have it on the Huawei Mate 20 Pro with the Karen 980 with the seven nanometer chipset. And I did it as well as a speed test comparing both of those devices. And I showed you guys basically how the loading and RAM management was comparing the two devices as well as the OnePlus 6T. If you'd like to see that as well, there'll be a link for that in the description below, of course. Uh, but overall, there is no question about it. This device is a beast. It will run very fast and it will just operate extremely well. I do have animation set to be at 0.5, not at 1.0, just to speed the actual UI for me. And I don't like to disable them. I like to still enjoy all the benefits that we get from this device. Now, when it comes to gaming, this device will not disappoint. Uh, running the Snapdragon 855 means we're gonna be getting the best experience on any kind of gaming device on the market right now. As most of the gaming phones that we have on the market, even today, are all running the Snapdragon 845. And even though they have a lot more specifications geared towards gaming, this device has also some of the best comp compatibility as far as market right now. And what you get here essentially is the gaming mode that is built in here to optimize not only gameplay, but also to minimize interruptions and other things that are going in the background whenever you just wanna focus on your game. Um, I've been playing Fortnite as well as PUBG and even Need for Speed Most Wanted. Graphics have been great. Uh, one of the main benefits, of course, that you may not be aware of is that the Galaxy S10, uh, on top of the fact that it supports HDR+, HDR10+, specifically, even with Netflix and content creators like that, it also supports 60 frames per second gameplay within Fortnite, and that's something that is very few devices other than the Note 9, let's say the View 20, let's go ahead and reduce the volume here, the, the View 20, uh, and of course, a very limited number of devices that are compatible with that. And playing games with here is just gonna be an absolute breeze. And of course, you notice that the UI kind of already kind of compensates for that little edge here. So it gives us a little bit of a bigger notch on the side. But when you're playing the games here, when you're using the device with the 19 by a half by nine aspect ratio, I don't think you're going to have any issues with that. You can go under the settings and you notice right there, we have 60 frames per second. Now it does bring us down to high. So when we go up to Epic, we are only up to 30 frames per second. 60 frames per second is set directly only when you're playing at the high level. Uh, but other than that, gameplay is extremely well and I've just been enjoying using this. As I sent to you guys, just the graphics, uh, the quality, the display, overall, everything just looks amazing here. As far as the operating system, we are running One UI 1.1. We have customizable toggles here at the top to be able to activate and use all the different functionalities that we have on top of the ability of actually being able to hide and show our navigation uh, buttons here to be able to use the gestures that are built in directly into this device. So you can disable it from here and it takes them away. And for the most part, you're just swiping up for wherever you say here. I have my recent application sitting here and I can actually swipe from the bottom here to go home and then back and sitting here. On top of the fact that we also have gestures here to be able to use on side gestures. And those are nice functionalities that we got when using the GoodLock application. Now, GoodLock 2018 is supported with One UI 1.1, uh, but it doesn't have all the same functionalities that we had with Oreo. So if you've used it in the past, this is definitely something you can appreciate. Uh, we have Nice Catch, which gives us the ability of notif seeing the notifications and all the different things that are being pushed. Uh, edge control to be able to customize the edge side. One-handed operation is what I showed you guys right there. This is the ability to customize and set up the different options here with the side launcher and you can actually use it very nicely and it works over all the screens and it works on both the right and left side. The sound assistant, I don't know if you guys noticed that when I was doing the volume option here, that was that little menu that we saw here. This is not native to the system, but it's very nice and you're able to customize it. Uh, routines as well as clock faces to be able to customize your main clock faces. So overall, a lot of really cool things. The options, of course, go in here into the settings tab. You'll be able to customize your display, your wallpapers and themes, all the different things that you can expect out of your standard Samsung option. Uh, lock screen wallpaper, as I told you guys, this is one of my favorite options. It's the ability of using a lock screen wallpaper with a video. We have front facing camera for face unlock, that 3D fingerprint sensor there, all of the things that so far are just basically top notch quality stuff that we can get here with the S10 Plus. 
And again, there's an eight gig model all the way to 12 gigs of RAM with one terabyte of internal storage on that top model, about $1,500, $1,600 for the S10 Plus model. Now, the cameras on this device are not going to disappoint. And I say this because the quality of the images, the quality of just the color processing, again, is very similar to the way we've seen it before with Samsung devices. Uh, and of course, be, being able to do this live focus option and then going after and then being able to retouch the images, you can add the little bokeh effect that you notice right there. It just allows my son to stand out from everything in the background. I'm able to do that zoom effect here and I'm actually able to configure it. I can do the spin, which also again gives us the ability of just doing that much more artistic image. And of course, just the stock blur and it does actually pretty good subject isolation from the front and the back. When we go into the camera and the front facing sensors here, we have two different sensors. As I mentioned to you guys, there's a 10 and an eight. And for the most part, the eight megapixel sensor on the right side is mostly for just depth perception. You notice that doesn't really do much on my side. I'm able to do the zooming in and out. And for the most part, this is just a crop. It is not actually zooming in and out because I can still do the same thing, putting it on this sensor. I can do it in here and it does the exact same thing. Overall, the reason why we have the secondary sensor here is to be able to get great images and just great subject isolation and just better photography in the front. It doesn't take anything away from the actual experience, but it's something that you should be aware of. Even though we have two sensors, we're really most of the time using the left sensor to be able to take those images. The one on the right is mostly for depth perception. Night photography on this device is just gonna be fantastic. We did a walk in San Francisco the day of the actual unpacked event, and it was just absolutely fantastic. Just night shots, you could get them like this, uh, just black and white filters, subject isolation, great, great photography. And I, one of my favorite shots right there is my new Instagram uh, profile picture, just that nice little profile image here with the subject isolation. And again, I can go in there, I can customize it, I can do that little zoom, just really nice punch out there, spin effect or even the blur effect, and it just looks fantastic. And of course, just all of the images that you take with this device, I mean, night shots are gonna look great. It takes really good images. It does not have a dedicated mode, but it does kick in whenever there's not enough light. So here's a quick example of super slow motion. And you can literally see exactly the, the, the slow down, the images, everything looks amazing. And again, this is just standard slow motion. The other one was super slow-mo. Again, just fantastic images. Okay, so now that we've talked about all the great things about the Galaxy S10 Plus, let me mention to you guys uh, my impressions or at least some of the things that I did not necessarily like about the device after having it for over a week and a half now. First and foremost, I mentioned this in my initial impressions, is the placement of the power button. Um, you guys, some of you guys commented on the other video saying, well, they moved it up because they needed space for the fingerprint sensor. Well, the fingerprint sensor is on the bottom. The Bixby button didn't move. The volume rocker didn't move. And for the most part, that's something that just, I don't know why, but again, they moved it slightly higher. I, I need to still check out the S10 and I'm hoping that one didn't have that much, but for the most part, I always have to overreach to get to it and it's something that you want to keep in mind. It's just an aesthetical difference. If you're used to the S9 Plus, this is going to basically stand out to you right away the moment you hold the device. You try to reach for it, you can't reach it, you have to go over for it. But again, that's maybe just me nitpicking, but I just need to mention to you guys some of those things. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is that Bixby button. Now, if you launched the Bixby functionality, if you used it, if you like Bixby, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, my personal experience is for the most part, I've always wanted to remap this button. And we finally received that. They mentioned it or we saw it on the hands-on initially at the Unpacked. And we finally received that update. It gives us the ability of actually, well, I'll show you guys what I mean. Uh, the ability of actually going in into the settings tab and we're able to remap the Bixby functionality. We have the ability of doing either a single press for Bixby, double press for a custom app, or a double press for Bixby and a single press for basically whatever customizations you'd like to use. Now, out of the box, without a video that I did separately on this, and if you guys like to see how I was able to do this, the ability of mapping the Google Assistant to the Bixby button, natively, the option of remapping, which what we received from Samsung, does not allow us to map specifically either to the Assistant or let's say Cortana. But I do have a video for you guys showing you guys exactly how to do this if you want to be able to do that. That to me is something that I don't understand. We finally got the ability of remapping Bixby, but we can't use the one thing that most of us want to use the Bixby remapping option for. And that's the ability of basically remapping it to the Google Assistant. Now, in my opinion, I think you should just basically remap it to whatever you'd like, launching, let's say your favorite podcast, let's say your favorite application, whenever you just want it, or even be able to take, you know, any kind of routines and their special custom commands. Very, very nice. It just, again, Great feature, but missing that one functionality that we wanted. Now the display is gorgeous and there's no question about that, but out of the box, and I don't understand it to this day, Samsung likes to go in and automatically give us the display at full HD+, 2280 by 1080, and that's basically a 1080p display running at the 19 and a half by, or 19 by nine aspect ratio. And the reason behind that, I'm not sure, I think it's probably for battery savings, but for the most part, the average user will open up the device and start using it without ever going into the display section, section and turning on full HD or WQHD+. 
that's the full resolution of why we want to enjoy this super super massive panel and just enjoy the quality not only the colors but just the resolution and the two options that we have here as far as colors we have vivid and natural and for the most part i like to keep it at vivid and keep the settings set up correctly and that just allows us to enjoy the colors and just everything about this display and again as you can see right there i'm a big fan of goku and i want to make sure that whenever i'm looking at an alter instinct image of goku i want to enjoy the colors the everything about it just looks amazing the next thing on my list is we don't have a dedicated night mode on this device the camera itself has a lot of different modes and there's basically food panorama uh, life focus which just looks absolutely fantastic and we'll get into some picture samples real quick video super slow-mo and of course the ability of going slow motion that's just overall slow motion images and of course hyperlapse uh, the ability of taking front facing uh, uhd video stabilized it's just amazing the back sensors on the back we're able to go to 4k at 60 frames per second uh, we have the ultra wide lens on the back that just gives us the ability of fitting way more content that we want to be able to fit on this camera and just absolutely fantastic but again no dedicated night mode it made me actually want to go out and find an actual port that will make it work so that i'm able to get the uh, night sight functional but at this point unfortunately all the ports that i've been able to get night sight for the most part doesn't work yet but it just tells me that this is we are a few steps away from being able to get night sight and at that point i think we can truly take the full uh, benefit here of the sensors that we have on this device now the last thing i want to talk to you guys about here is essentially just the overall charger that we have in the box it is 2019 and to this day we still don't have let's say a 30 watt charger or 40 watt charger i mean oneplus has a warp 30 and they did that in 2018 and of course we have the Mate 20 Pro from 2018 that has a 40 watt charger and they're able to charge similar size batteries a lot faster than what we get here with the S10 Plus. I'm not knocking it down. I wanna make sure that I have a very safe experience with this. We don't wanna have a redo of the Note 7 experience, but in my experience, at least in 2019, we need to have at least a 25 watt charger or something closer to that to be able to at least recharge our device a lot faster. We do have wireless, uh, fast wireless charging as well as fast wire charging, but the comparable speeds to the other device flagships on the market right now, they are definitely a lot faster. Samsung has a winner. After 10 years of Galaxy S devices, we definitely have a device that could be called the best of what they have to offer. The S10 Plus offers basically the best combination of different things, the dual sensors on the front, the triple in the back, the 128 gigs of internal storage, the seven nanometer Snapdragon 855, the dynamic AMOLED Quad HD Plus display with HD HDR 10 plus compatibility. I mean, seriously, guys, we're talking about some of the best specifications on the market. So regardless if you have a Note line device, you know, independent of the S Pen, obviously the S Pen is a, is a must. If you need that, the Note is always going to be your guy. Uh, but for the most part, I think this is definitely an upgrade. You can go all the way to 12 gigs of RAM, uh, up to one terabyte of internal storage if you want to be able to go as much on this device. And it has a bigger battery than the Note 9. Uh, definitely better than the S9 and the S9 Plus. The 7 nanometer of Snapdragon 855 is a faster CPU than what we have at the 845. Now, it's not night and day fast, but it's considerably faster at processing, loading things, and running things. And of course, we have really good memory management here. I did a speed test comparing how many applications I was able to leave in RAM, specifically since we have 8 gigs of RAM on this device, and the S10 Plus actually turned out to be the champ. It was pretty fast, and it held up all the applications, a couple of really heavy loading games there within memory without letting them drop. Now, as far as price and availability, the S10e will start at $749, the S10 will start at $899, and the S10 Plus, which is what we have here, will start at $999, which is about $1,000. So definitely price point is a little bit higher, but don't forget that there is still an option, which is the S10e at $749, and I'm really looking forward to be able to check that out. But as far as availability, all major carriers will have them in the US and they're gonna start having them in the stores starting the 8th, as far as for you to be able to pick them up. If you pre-order the S10 or the S10 Plus, not the E, you'll be able to get a free pair of Galaxy Bud included with that. And that's actually a very nice combo because those buds are actually one of the best wireless, true wireless buds on the market. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of this review? It took me some time to be able to get the, kind of get a really good feeling for this. I came from the Mate 20 Pro and it was definitely one of my favorite devices of 2018. And I found it very hard at the beginning to be able to basically say that the S10 Plus was definitely an upgrade for me. But after using it for about a week and a half, a little bit more, I truly appreciate the functionality, the lightness of the weight, the, uh, the ease of use, the display quality, the bigger display, of course, the implementation of the punch hole camera over the notch. A lot of things made me start gravitating towards it's the S10 Plus. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video.